Right now, Leon Jamison from Smith & Associates. We're talking about real estate. We're talking about hurricane foreclosures. What do you mean? Are there more foreclosures because of hurricanes, or is this because your house got damaged? And how are you going to pay for <laughs> your mortgage and rent and all your living expenses while your house is being fixed? I, you know, I think um, lenders were a little bit smarter this time um, and wised up after what's happened in the past. And most lenders offered a forbearance program uh, to Floridians. Um, the, most of the programs I have for three months where they would offer to put your payments at the end of your loan. You have to kind of check those terms. Um, so that was something that was widely available. But I do think it's it's too soon to say yet, but I do think you'll probably see a little bit of a spike in foreclosures in areas like Naples and the Keys where they were hard. Because I'm wondering, you know, three months and I'm going, wait a minute, I have had projects in my own house that it yeah. took me three months to find a licensed contractor. Yeah. yeah, you have to kind of negotiate with your bank on that. But uh, again, I think you're going to see it more in the hardest hit areas. Should that be something that you should ask for or should Absolutely. a bank come to you? you, know, you, should, you should you should go to your. You should be proactive in that. Absolutely. Now, uh, what about houses that were already in foreclosure? Now, do they have to wait in line or what? <laughs> yeah, they're they're pro you know nothing in in the Florida foreclosure process is quick. Right, that's um, true. So yeah, this this could slow it down just a bit more. Now, while we're talking mm -hmm. about that, you told me some other interesting numbers because I just happened to say it. Well, yes. how many houses are out there? And you're telling yes. me the inventory, which is kind of like the golden rule of, of mm -hmm. how the market's going to go, is really really low. We this so. When I was researching numbers for this month, I about fell out of my chair. Um, we are at the lowest number since I have had my real estate license in 2006. Really? In inventory. That's the number of homes that are available for sale. We are at about a 2.6 month of inventory in Pinellas, Hillsboro, and Pasco County. And you think we're, we're building them? Well, you think we're building them like crazy because we've done all these stories Not about fast these, enough. these new communities <laughs> coming up. Well, what about all the apartments, though? Because the apartments are going up everywhere. Yeah, I mean, people are renting, people are buying, we, we're, people are moving to Florida fast than we can house people. Would, so. would people still prefer, and I know millennials, they're all <laughs> very different, <laughs> would people still prefer to live in a house rather than a townhouse? I think it depends on people's lifestyles. Um, we are seeing a lot more townhouses go up too, so it just depends yeah. on it, you know, if you're the type that wants maintenance free or not. Uh, so now let's talk about something else, because uh, mm -hmm. when can FEMA help in here? Because I've had FEMA officials here, and then I saw the figure that said that the average payout by FEMA, even for houses that are destroyed, was like six thousand dollars. Yeah, I think. There's it, this, there, I think there, it depends on each each case individually. Because they say uh, the insurance is the first one you mm -hmm. have to deal with. Yeah, insurance and your claims adjuster and all of that. So wow. in some cases. Yeah. Uh, something else. National mm -hmm. flood insurance. I'll, yes. tell, well, I'll tell you what. You know that that's <laughs> for my house. That was the smartest five hundred dollar investment I've ever made in my life. Absolutely. Because I live near the water. Uh, now I'm at twelve feet and I was worried about being flooded. But you and your friends on I'm Shore at six Acres. Feet. Yeah, six I'm, feet. I'm I'm near Shore Acres. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely. I I always advise people, even if you're not in a mandated zone to have flood coverage, if it's an extra three or five hundred bucks, do it. I mean, it's... Hey, what about those people in Houston? I know, I know. And oh. they, they, they didn't do it, and, no. and they should have. You but never they, know when you're going to get that hundred-year storm. So. And, and who would have known that they were in the path of a reservoir that would have to be Absolutely. drained down? That would be something that yeah. you want to know. So uh, there are, uh, they're working on some changes. So tell me yes. about what you think needs to be changed. Um, I would tell most homeowners, hold, hold tight, hang on before you make any major changes, unless you're in the process of buying a house uh -huh. um, and in that case you kind of have to check with your lender and their underwriter to see what coverage they'll accept whether some of them will only accept um, FEMA coverage and some of them will accept uh, you know Lloyd's of London tip tap some of these oh. outside now here's um, a, here's a confusing that I got I got two mailers mm -hmm. for national flood insurance and they mm -hmm. were two different companies mm -hmm. yet they both uh, and I didn't think different, that was different possible. insurance well, underwriters, it, confused me it is confusing yeah so how do you know that you're with the government program although Technically, aren't you with a government program anyway? Because they're the only ones that insure. Is that not, not true? Not true anymore. There are private insurers like Lloyd's of London and Tip Top and some of these that are coming into the market, but not every lender will accept those. So that's what you have to be careful if of. If I would have got a Lloyd's of London, I would have remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been something I would have framed and said, I got elected. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about something else. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the president wants to cut taxes in a lot of ways, yes. wants to cut the corporate rate, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the mortgage rate you know, was sacrosanct everybody, in terms of mm -hmm. the deduction. For the mortgage mm -hmm. interest, uh, maybe not so. So the numbers they're toying with are what? Uh, so the National Association of Realtors came out and said, "Okay, everybody needs to call your legislators and say this is not what we what we wanted and what we asked for." The new legislation includes a cap on the mortgage interest deduction at 500k for new mortgages. Um, it puts limits on the exemption for the capital gains tax for the sale of your primary residence. Um, it eliminates the deduction for state and local income tax. 
Um, it eliminates the mortgage interest deduction on second homes, which is huge for people in Pinellas County. We have a lot of second homeowners there. You can? I, now, see, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, it eliminates the deduction for moving expenses. It eliminates the deduction for personal casualty losses from things like hurricanes. Uh-huh. Um, it eliminates the deduction for student loans. I mean, all kinds of things. So it's... It, it's it's not well, all it's cracked the, up to the, be. <laughs> the tough part about, about tax reform is that it's going to hit everybody differently. Yes. And there are certain areas, and this is why they haven't been able to get anything done with tax reform since 86 or even before that. Absolutely. Is that everybody wants to hold on to their own little shell, mm -hmm. and now they're trying to make it so it's as simple as it goes in a postcard. Mm hmm I almost want to take a bet about whether that's going to happen. Right. That's going to have to be a mighty big yes. postcard for some of us. So, but they, they did at least keep, because a lot of people thought they were going to get rid of the mortgage uh, on the home completely. Right. It sounds like they're going to cap it. So yeah. we'll see what shakes out. Anything else that we should be looking at in terms of the real estate market? And you talked about the holidays that are coming up. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think, um, especially if you're from up north, that the holidays are a bad time to sell. Because the inventory of what's available is so low right now, it, this is actually an excellent time to sell a home. Yes, it's a little inconvenient. You want to go to holiday parties and well, do yeah, other things yeah, this time yeah. of year. Um, but it actually gives people a warm and fuzzy feeling when your home is decorated for the holidays and, you know, nice, elegant decorations. Um, and the most serious home buyers are buying this time of year because you have a lot of corporate relocations happening in November and December. Right. So these are people that are here that are looking to buy immediately. Um, they don't haggle as much because they just have to find a house and get moved. Yeah, and how um, long do you think we can keep this up with these interest rates that are, I mean, they're so low. It's we're unreal. at 4% still, so, I mean, wow. who knows, you know. We'll, Time we'll to go out and buy my goes. second and third house. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Jameson, hey, yes. thanks for keeping track of these numbers. Yes. We love when you come back and give that information to us.